the singing tonight that connect with uh, Sue's testimony and connect with the broader theme of our evening service series, our evening gathering series, and that is um, We Are All Gospel Witnesses. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open for us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we lift up this evening to you. We lift up our time of singing and interview to you, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would be present tonight to bring glory to you in all that is sung, all that is said, all that is thought, and in all the ways that we respond. We pray for special grace for Sue. We thank you that she can be with us with all the things that she's going, are going on for her. And we pray, Father, for healing for her in her fight against cancer, but also for, for grace and strength in the other challenges that she faces. And we thank you that she's ready here tonight to give to give a reason for the hope that is within her and to challenge us as well with her story, Lord, which is your story in her life. Give her everything she needs to say exactly what you want her to say this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. And Sue has also requested a special uh, evening of worship with a few songs that uh, are very near and dear to her heart. And we're going to sing these together. All righty. Uh, Days of Elijah. <laughs> Amazing grace. Let me see if I have the music here. Uh, we have it in the orange book, so long as Grandma has. That's all right. No, yeah. Don't be sorry at all. Hey, Tyler, Tyler, can you pull up a PowerPoint for Amazing Grace? Uh, Sue, would you like the My Chains Are Gone version or the generic hymn version? No, that's the generic, generic hymn version. Generic hymn version it is. Uh, no, you're right. We just have the word here. <laughs> oh, Amazing Grace, we do have the uh, five. How exciting. We're going to start tonight out with Amazing Grace, then. Um, for the music musicians, it is on page five.
great one. Thanks for that introduction song, Sue. The next one we're going to sing tonight is Days of Elijah. And this doesn't have to be so formal. So if you want to stand up and do the motions, if you want to get involved, this is a great time to do so. Oh, this is going to require some, uh, some back to my childhood days. Let's see if I can remember that. Servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And all these are days of great trials, a famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert. These are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world. So we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of your life. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. to follow that one but we are going to do it and we are going to sing blessed assurance this is my story um, joined by the trumpet no less this is with two sharps <laughs> just in case <laughs> but this one is well known to all of you so hopefully if not it will be after this Oh, 
Spirit washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, the Lord. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior, the Lord. Perfect submission. Sending bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior, the dear Lord. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Savior Jesus died for us, that he rose again, and that he's coming again to make us new, as we often talk about. Um, but this is such good news, and we have to be able to share that with others, which is why we meet on Sunday nights to talk about sharing the gospel with people and having other people share in that story with us. Our final song is going to be 10,000 Reasons, but before we sing it, um, let's have a word of prayer to kind of prepare our hearts for this song. Dear Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your name because we are dirt and you are such a holy God. And we are so, so happy that you came and died for our many, many sins. The sins we've committed today, yesterday, and the ones we're going to commit tomorrow. Um, and we are so excited that you're going to come again and you're going to make us new. That we're going to be able to share in an everlasting life with you in heaven. This is such good news, Lord. We ask that you deepen this in our own hearts, that we have the gratitude of what you have done for us, but you also cause us to flow out all of this great joy and this great story that we can share it with other people. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, one that loves you and loves people. We bless your holy name. You got it. Did you just start playing? Yes, you are.
worship your holy name. Thank you, Sue, for all of the great suggestions tonight. It was great to sing with you. Um, and it was also, I'm very excited to hear your testimony. Amen. Thank you, Monica, Paul, and Debbie, Doris, Kayla, Carl, and Sue. You ready to come on up? Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Good? Yep. Now do I have to do it? Um, I think I think you're on. She's on, right? Testing, testing. Perfect. We can hear you loud and clear. Sue, you're a pioneer. You're the first one we've done this with on a Sunday night. Oh really? So that's great. We okay. can we can learn together. All right. Okay. Sounds like fun. So let's just jump right in. So if those of you don't know, Sue was born in Germany during World War II. And uh, so just, if, could you tell us a little bit about your life there, about your family, um, some of your experiences? Well, I was born in 1942. I didn't, for the longest time, I didn't know there was a world beyond my little town in Germany. Um, there isn't too much I remember because I was really too young, but... Um, I have heard stories my parents, or my mom, and my grandma telling me, and my neighbors telling me, that now I think I remember. Um, I didn't know God. I didn't know about God. I knew Hitler. You know, he was our God. Hmm. Um, and life, I didn't know there was a different life. I thought everybody was poor. I thought everybody lived where the bombs would be dropped on them. Um, I lived in a cellar, in a wine cellar, in a wine barrel mm. that kept me safe. We would go out ever so often, but we hear the, the alarms, and then we knew to go back down. And those cellars are a little deeper than our basements. So I remember this, because I lived quite a few years there. And we were lucky because we had a, I should say blessed now, that I know God already had his hand over me before I even knew he existed. He, we had a cow and we had a pig. And I lived with my cow and I lived with my pig. And I remember one story that was told in town. And so it must be true. My mom, when I was about two years old, wanted to go on the uh, train and drive to Berlin because we lived really close to the uh, French border. And my mom thought we would be safer in Berlin. Mm. So we went to the train station and I kind of feel like I remember, but I know I couldn't. But we went to the train station. There was a lot of other people coming and going. And like the crazy girl I always was, I would stand there and I would say, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler, Heil Hitler. And my mom got so embarrassed, she took me, we went back home, we missed the train. Mm. But what we didn't know was this train was bombed and just about everybody on this train was killed. Wow. My family in Berlin, where we wanted to go to, were bombed and just everybody was killed. Huh. So here, this little town, Trabentrabach on the Mosel, really close to Belgium and France. We were a lot safer there. So already then God had his hand over me, you know? It, it, it didn't happen till about maybe 60 years later that I realized what was going on. And then when I grew up, got older, the, I remember, that I remember, I was still young, but I remember, um, there were no men in my household. There were no men in anybody's house, household. There were only male children 
or male great grandparents. Everybody else was in the war or killed during the war. Mm -hmm. so, so the Americans was marching in and we, as German where I live, we were very afraid of the French because things have happened to Germans by the French. So we, we didn't want the French eventually. Well, we were occupied by the French. But when the Americans moved through town, I don't know, it was like uh, the new people coming. They're coming to rescue us. <laughs> you know, I thought that I was rescued by the Americans. I never knew, you know, and the Americans were so happy that welcomed their God after they had to fight the Germans. Mm -hmm. They realized now Germans are not really Nazis. They just had to fight. Like you, you, there's war, so you go and fight. It was nothing personal. So I remember um, my mom was asking some neighbors if they had seen me, and they said, oh, she's probably down in town with the Americans. <laughs> of course, there I was. Some American had picked me up and um, had told somebody who spoke some English that he had a little girl at home looked just like me. <laughs> and if my mother wouldn't come soon, then I would go to America. <laughs> now that was so many years ago, who would thought I would end up in America? <laughs> you know, so my, parent, my mom came and my grandma and the Americans would give us candy and bananas and oranges well, we didn't know any better. We, we didn't know you peel those things. And I saw the Americans must be the craziest people, <laughs> eating oranges and bananas. They're just, bananas was okay, but the oranges, they tasted just like, you know? We, well, I tell you what, it took us not too long to figure out you take the peel off. <laughs> and I think that's what God kind of did with me too. You know, he, all those years I'm going through, you find it, the peel is finally off now, you know? <laughs> but that's the other thing I remembered. And um, there was good things and not so good things growing up, but we didn't have much, but we didn't know we, that we were poor. I don't think we ever had a piano, but I think if we had one, we probably would have burned it to keep warm in the winter time. But we were kind of lucky because we did have um, vineyards, so we had lots of wine, and my mom would travel by foot like 200 miles. She would be gone, go in the city with wine, and she'd come back with bedding and other things, mm -hmm. and then she would traded in town for food. Mm. And of course, eventually the cow got killed, the pig got killed, the rabbits got killed. And, but I mean, this, this was life. And we were happy. We didn't have TV, we didn't have television. What is TV? We didn't have telephone. Matter of fact, I never had a TV until I came to the United States in 1965. Mm. And now I should really throw it out of the house. But that's kind of grown up. And there was no, I, when I got older, we went to church as a group. Mm. My class went to church. My class studied the Bible. Mm. My class made profession of faith. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a personal experience. Mm. We learned what the Bible said, but there was nothing about a personal relationship, you know? And, mm -hmm. it, and um, we had a Catholic priest and a evangelist, a Lutheran pastor, and one was sick, then we would go in the other church, and the Lutheran pastor was married to the Catholic priest's sister. So to me, it was all one happy family. I didn't know about Luther and this and all those things, not really till I came to the United States. Mm -hmm. So I made profession of faith, I was baptized, but it really didn't mean that much. I mean, I learned what is wrong and what is right. I learned work ethics and to respect people and their property. And I always was a nice, pretty nice girl. When I had a car, when I had my first car, I remember if it rained, I would drive into town to pick the old ladies up to take them home. 
<laughs> but it didn't really had nothing to do with Christianity. I was mm -hmm. just trying to be nice to people. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's. And when I got older, well, the Americans came. They built air bases. They built housing. My father worked for the Americans. Yeah, I forgot to say that. I didn't meet my father till he was five years old. Um, during those years, my father was missing. He was, I don't know how many, how long, how many months. He was a prisoner of war. He got, um, when they wanted to Africa, they got caught, he got shut down. His, and I guess, guess I'm a little bit too long in this, but this is no, important. This is, good. This, is good. this is, my father was shut down on a big boat ship going to Africa from Italy. What happened, and I always thought that was a story that he just told me, but after my father's funeral, I found out there was some people at the boat and at the rescue boat that uh, verified what my father said. And people really believed what he said. Now, what he told me was, he was floating in this water, and this man said, come, Alfred, come, hang on here. So my father paddled over there, hung on the piece of wood with this man. He doesn't know exactly how long he was hanging on this wood, and the man talking to him, don't give up. Don't give up. You want to go home. You want to go to Germany. You want to meet your daughter. And finally, like my father said, he doesn't know when, a boat came approaching, and a British boat. And, well, to make a long story short, they fished him out of the water. And my father said, where's the other man? <laughs> The people said that the soldiers, the British soldiers, some of them said, there was no other man. Hmm. And my father said, yes, there was. And there were some British soldiers who said, yeah, we seen another man. We seen him right when we got there. Hmm. My father, till the he died, he said it was an angel because they didn't find a dead man. They didn't find anybody else. And he always said, he was born again, but I didn't know. Hmm. He always told me he was younger than I am because his life was given him when he was floating in the water. Hmm. But you know, he was my father. He was telling me a bedtime story or whatever. Now I know it's true. And they have people researched that other people too had this experience. Hmm. And he never really um, talked about it too much because he didn't want people to laugh at him. Yeah, but yeah. he was always different. There was a little, and, and Ted met my father, you know? Huh. You knew there was something special about him. I didn't know at that time. <coughs> so there, God intervened again. And when I was five years old, this, this man came home with a beard and I supposed to call him Papa and I was kind of scared of him. But he became my best, best, best man, my best, my <coughs> best friend. You know, when, when years later, when I went back to Germany to honor my parents, the pastor in my hometown asked me, how come I came to take care of my parents? Why so many um, women who married in America, stayed in America, you know, never came back till after they die? I said, I had a good, earthly father, which made it later in life for me very easy to believe in a good heavenly father. Mm. And Pastor Richard even said then, what better way to honor your parents, your father and your mother, than go yeah. and, and help them out. Yes, which is a stirring story all by it's, itself. It's, but going back a little bit more about my father. You're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> going, I hope, I'm done before you have to leave. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's one more thing I have to say. It's amazing. And if I wouldn't be living some of my life, I wouldn't believe it. But while I was growing up in Germany, my father was in South Holland in the 40s as a prisoner of war, attending the onion fields. And one area is where my house is now. 
Can you believe this? My house is where my father was in the 40s. It's crazy. So there always was a connection. I mean, what was it about America, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, and I met some people who worked with the prisoners and, yeah. So this is really amazing too. But going back to my life, I grew up. I wasn't a bad person. I, I wasn't a godly person because I didn't know how to be. Um, you know, I just was blessed that I wasn't, that I didn't got into drugs or anything. I always said, there because of Jesus already took care of me way back then. So I married an American, came to the United States. Guy didn't work out. Once we came to the United States, Ronald Scruck, half Dutch, was not the man I married. In the military, he was this rich guy. You know, we made, um, at that time, $900, $900 a month. That was a lot of money hmm. in 1963. And we lived with my parents. We flew, he flew to Eng England to get suits made. He flew to Italy to get boots made. Once we moved to the United States, we lived way down on the Ohio River, Shawnee Town. I didn't know places like that exist. I mean, talking about hillbillies, there are no bigger hillbillies than the hillbillies of Shawnee Town in the 60s. Hmm. <laughs> it was just like, well, good thing happened. We had my daughter Heidi. Marriage didn't work out. I thought I knew it better, so I married, and Ronald didn't want to work. He just worked enough so we didn't starve and he could go do whatever he did, do, play pool or what. You know, there's no Christianity. We moved, we moved a couple times, ended up in Morris, and I wanted to have my open house, but I couldn't afford it, so I bought a trailer. And we moved closer to Joliet. And, I t and every Sunday, we didn't go to church. We went to Shawnee Town so he could go drinking. Saturday, we went to Shawnee Town so they could all go drinking while I cleaned house. And then we went back, and I told him, I can't do that anymore. This life is not for me. <laughs> I knew something was missing, but I didn't know what. Hmm. So we moved next door to um, grandparents who took care of their grandson, and I kind of helped taking care of their grandson. He played with Heidi. They were only six months apart. Long story short, no, it was a short story. Within months, I got married to this man. Well, I had to get divorced first. Got divorced, married Jim Thompson, a man who worked too much. But it was all in God's will. I still hadn't found a church. I would go off and on with somebody to church, but I didn't know. I probably should. We're out of Germany. So. Yeah, no, <laughs> and you're, you're, you're going right where you need to go. Keep going. Oh. So <laughs> I married Jim Thompson, and wouldn't you believe it, he got a job. Um, he was a welder, diesel mechanic, hardworking guy. He got a job at the truck stop. In? Exactly, the Illinois. big truck stop. That truck stop was known all over. <laughs> Younger people don't know what I'm talking about. So, and I still lived by Joliet, and he would come home every Friday, and he would fall asleep on the way coming home, and uh, people, the, the police knew him, and we fi he, they finally talked him in to buy a house in South Holland. So we looked at a house over by Sipley in Dalton with a built-in pool, really nice house. And then somebody from the truck stop said, um, you don't want to move to Dalton, you want to stay in South Holland. Good schools, oh yeah, good schools, good. Because by now I had a baby with Thompson, Benny, my son, and Heidi was six years old, she needed to go we needed to find a stable place for my daughter to go to school. One school, not moving, mm -hmm. you know. 
So, wouldn't you believe it, we got talked in to move to 16537 Maryland Avenue, 1970. Hmm. September, October, 1970, we moved there. There's my house, you go to 166th Street, you go to Cottage Cove, you cross the street, and what is on the other side of the street? Cottage Grove Christian Reformed Church. Would you believe what God did? My husband was very abusive. A couple times he beat me half to death. Um, and I think some of my problems stem from that time. Like he threw me out of the truck because he didn't want to take me home. I played Russian roulette shooting at me. You know, a lot of things. I don't even want to go into it. Very abusive man. He used this man to bring me right around Cottage Grove Church. It's, it's amazing. And you read the Bible, he takes bad people to make good things happening. Mm. God can take, and can you believe this? If you believe that he can take bad people, how much easier would it be he take good people and make things happening? And he does take good people. He takes Anton and Gus to come to my house and cut the grass. He, he made the best nurse sitting over there, married to a pastor. She also cuts the grass. Oh, I know. And, and pastor <laughs> cuts the grass, I tell you. You need help. And so I ended up Cottage Cove. Dr. Rules was there at the time. He even got me a job working at the Bible League, what brought me to a whole different thing. And I still wasn't a Christian. I was a Christian, but I wasn't filled with spirit. Mm -hmm. And way back then, Cottage Grove started coffee break. My mom was a big help. Your mom was the biggest help ever. I'm glad you brought this up. I just went to coffee break because I was married to that terrible man, and there were some neighbors, and they invited me over, and I went to Sylvia, and I went to Sylvia, and I went to Sylvia, Ted's wife, and then I also met your husband, your yeah, my father became friends with everybody. <laughs> so I started Coffee Break in 1971, I think, the first started. And that's the first time I met people who lived for the Lord. Not because I paid them money or I was pretty or I could give them something. Mm -hmm. There was P Sylvia. They could do, they would do for you Okay, it's still amazing for me, you know. It's, it's just looking back. Um, and, well, I had a, I really liked the coffee break. My husband, he was happy I was gone. I kept my mouth shut. But it really became unbearable. Well, he even did, he brought um, his mistress home, which later on became my best friend, and we kicked him out of the house, and... God takes things. I don't know what ever happened to her, but um, my husband finally moved out. And now I was free to go to Cottage Grove. I worked at the Bible League then for seven years, and I had a good time, wonderful time. And I had people like Sylvia and some other people. And so I worked. So while I worked at the at um, the Bible League, and then um, there's one more little story about me. I don't know, there's a book, there's Andrew in the Bible. There's also um, some comic books about Brother Andrew. Hmm. They smuggled things in to help, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one day I was going to Germany, and um, Dr. Rules approached me that they need somebody to bring Bibles to Germany. I worked at a Bible League, so I had a big suitcase full of Bibles. I said, sure, I take, I take this Bible over to Germany. Not knowing, but I know now. They just didn't want me to take the Bibles over there. They wanted me to help smuggling into Czechoslovakia, which was Russian. 
So I was, I was young and pretty at that time. <laughs> I was that young and pretty American with some pretty low cut clothes. So when we went, gotta explain this, when we went into Czechoslovakia, their way your we vehicle, they put their check it under there because they didn't want you to smuggle anything in. No medication, no Bibles, no clothing, nothing. Okay, so I would talk to those Russian, those communist soldiers. I don't know if they were all Russian, but it, while we all were praying, that's when I started more and more praying. I knew praying helps, but I still wasn't really emerged in the Holy Spirit. I mean, what could I have done then? But anyway, so we smuggled Bibles into Czechoslovakia. And I had my son Benny with me, who was maybe eight or 10 at that time. So I told him, go out there. Heidi had to stay with my parents. But I told my son, go out there by the wayside and play, and let's pick up some rocks. We take them to America, and we build a rock garden. Well, what we did with the rocks, for every Bible or medication we gave away, we had to put some rocks in the spot. So when we left and they weigh us again, we yeah. had, to, and those people knew exactly how many rocks weighs a Bible. Yeah. And hey, Benny's out there happily collecting rocks and sand and other dirt and just great. So we made it. Um, what they didn't tell me till after we went back to Austria was that an American couple before me wasn't as blessed as me. They got caught. And if you get caught, you get put in jail. And I had never been in jail. I still have never been in jail. And when they talk about that Americans come back and kiss, <laughs> kiss the ground, I kissed the ground in Austria, being back out of a communist country. But also while I was in a communist country, we had the Lord's Supper and there was different people and Polish, a lot of Polish people, and they're saying, Jesus loves me. And we said, Unser Vater, der du bist im Himmel, in, in many different languages. I think that's when the Holy Spirit started growing, because I realized there is more than just working at the Bible League, bringing Bibles in here, there. seeing all those different people together, it was just amazing. And I have a question for you. No, no. <laughs> yeah, you got to turn me off. No, mean, no, no. I'm oh, okay. not turning you off at all. Oh, You're okay. doing a great job. In fact, I hardly have to ask questions because you just keep going where, where I'm hoping you're going to go. So, oh. um, but the, the next question is specifically, um, how do you, can you tell when and how you came to know Jesus Christ personally as your Lord and Savior? Okay. And there's some more in between. I want to just mention a couple more things before I tell you that. That's fine, yeah. Um, when, um, I don't know, were you here when Sylvia died? I was. Okay. So were you here when Debbie had cancer? Because I kind of got the date came, mixed came up. Came right afterwards. So, okay. Yes. So which year did you have cancer? Now I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, what year was that? Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Sylvia died 2009? 2009. Yeah. Okay, so that was all about the same time. See, that's why I was so excited when the Van Troon and Smith family was up there. They're <laughs> part of my testimony, mm. just like Sylvia is. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. those are people, when they're on their deathbed, they will be praying for others, mm -hmm. just like Sylvia did. Mm. Sylvia kept on praying and praying and praying. And one of the, one thing I always feel bad about, I wish Sylvia had been alive when the Holy Spirit finally hit me. Ah. But um, Debbie said she knows, you know, because she prayed so many years, so hard for me. And I, I knew I knew what to do, I knew what was wrong, but it never, and 
this is kind of really weird how the Holy, how I finally learned to, the Holy Spirit came down. Um, I always had to be self-reliant. I had to be in control of my life, even when I was married, because my husbands didn't. And um, Thompson didn't last too long in South Holland. Two years he was gone. Mm -hmm. But I was blessed. I worked at the Bible League. I worked at South Suburban College, which I had wonderful Christian teachers. We had a Bible study. Everywhere I went, I had Christians surrounding me. I never got into this stuff that teach you in college and or try to install you. But um, my parents used to come and visit, and then they got kind of old. They couldn't come anymore. I would go over there. And um, I supposed to went to Germany. I had a ticket. And I'm a planner. Like, I had my will. I probably made my will 38 years ago. I ever so often, I have my uh, obituary written out. Ever so often I have to change it because people die and this happens. But I have everything planned. So what you have to do if I go before you, you know, it's, everything is written down. It just needs to be changed, you know. And ever so often I show up at my lawyers. Well, now I'm with the grandson from the original lawyer I had because they retire, they move away, and then I come on. Mm. But I'm a German in that way. Everything needs to be planned, planned, <laughs> you know? Mm. Mm. And well, I was going to Germany, and then I, something happened with my spine, and I was in a wheelchair. So I'm standing in my bedroom at night. No, I'm not standing. I'm sitting in, on my bed, and I said, now how am I going to go to Germany? I can walk a little bit. How am I going to Germany? And I got frustrated, I got angry, I took the tickets, I tore them up, I threw them in the air, and I said, okay, God, send your Holy Spirit and handle this. Oh my gosh. You can, I can describe it. Peace came down on me. I hear the voice saying, don't worry, you're gonna go to see your parents. And, and something said, read the Bible. I opened it up. I read things in there. Oh, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps you, again. Yeah. It was there. It was there. And it was after Sylvia had died. And I said, in the first thing, dialing 33C, I don't remember the number, trying to call your mom. And I said, Sylvia's gone. Oh, Sylvia, I know now what you're talking about. I know now what Dory believed in. When Debbie had, I got to go back to this too. When Debbie had cancer, yeah. I wanted to make, become a member. I was a, got away from Cottage Grove. I wanted to become a member again. Mm -hmm. But how could I become a member of a church that believed in a God that had Debbie with her, had those little boys and she had cancer. And Dory kept on praying and Ed kept on praying and they kept on coming to church. Mm. And I said, so those people are crazy. But then it hit me this mm. night when God told me I can go to Germany on my own because the Holy Spirit will be with me always. Wow. And that, I don't know exactly what year that was, but, and then the amazing people he sent to me. Now, I don't know if they're people or angels, but I found out if you can travel in a wheelchair in airports, but the airport people cannot take you out of the airport. Well, the airport people in Germany somehow, I need to go from the airport to a train, to a bus, to a taxi. Somehow there were people, they pushed my wheelchair, they handed me over to other people and other people and other people and there in the bus, in the taxi and I was home. Wow. <laughs> now, how can you not believe in the Holy Spirit, you know? And then reading the Bible, and I had studied the Bible. I had been to coffee break. I had been at, at the school studying, studying the Bible, reading the Bible. And now I was really, you could say, eating the Bible. Mm -hmm. I was just devouring it, devouring it, and reading it with different eyes. It's evident to me that the Holy Spirit is 
has made your heart fertile, that you're hungry for the word, that you're listening to the voice of, of the Lord and his word. It's, it's even in the last 10 years, Sue, um, well, we've been here 13 years. It's so evident to me the, the growth and the work that yeah. the, the spirit has done yeah. in your life, which is one of the what reasons I um, wanted you here today for your testimony. I, just a couple of questions as we sort of uh, wrap up here. Um, you, you talk about in those early days when you were still with uh, Thompson and you were, you were coming around to Cottage Grove. The, those early days, what was it about the people who came around you that God used to reach you? What was it about them as witnesses that God used to reach you? First, they didn't push, mm -hmm. but their coffee break, but also come to the houses that took me. They were the same kind of people Debbie is now. Mm -hmm. You need to go to the hospital. And matter of fact, when I had cancer the last time, it was Sylvia and Ted who took me to Chicago. Uh. Now it is, it's their unselfish love. Mm -hmm. It's when you read about those um, Paul and the apostles traveling and helping, uh. picking up, like in the room time, picking up the babies from the side, helping, mm. doing things. Yeah. It's more than preaching. You can turn the TV on and you listen to those fancy pastors with those fancy suits and their fancy watches and their fancy shoes and their airplanes talking, talking, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? But I don't see them out there cutting your neighbor's grass or help, you know, doing wound care for. <laughs> it's the service, it's more, and, and it's just like Jesus. Jesus would go out, but he fed the people too. Yeah. He helped, he healed them, and that's what they're doing. And it's, it's like, um, and I always thought, um, that before I leave, I have to read some Bible verses. Yes. But do you have any other? But it is, it's the, the, well, when we go to the hospital, and thank you, Dory, again, for letting me adopt your daughter. <laughs> See, the reason it's like, if I had Sylvia here, she would be up there singing, too, um, because that was part, those songs we sing, those songs help. Because, I mean, now I have can. well, the worst thing is, you want to see my arm? This is nothing there, mm -hmm. you know, but... God uses cancer. Oops, Paul, I oh, broke hold it. Hold on. There. He um, uses people. And I, I found out, the other thing that I found out, like um, through my situation now, I became really good friends with, um, can I say names? If for, for, if you say good things, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I assumed you were, by the way. <laughs> no, I only... Um, it, it already started in Arkansas when I um, couldn't telephone. You know, there, there's three... I have three very strong prayer partners. One is sitting right over there. Hmm. Every day she sent me text, all through the day, still now too. Mm. And um, Judy sweats. But I never have been that close with Judy. Mm -hmm. But we came so close now, it's really something, you know. I know when she is hurt, I start crying. I think, what's wrong, you know? And I, I text her, I said, are you okay? And she said, no, I'm crying. I said, mm. me too, what's happening? But seeing her, seeing Sylvia, and seeing some other people too, um, which have problems, and they still come to church, they still mm. praise God. You can be in, you know, my, um, Kelsey's parents, yeah. David. Yeah. You know, and I never knew what all problems are behind going on, you know. And, but you always think, oh yeah, it's easy to praise God if you have everything. And, 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 well, you don't, really don't realize that everybody has problems. Mm. And the people who don't, well, there's something wrong with them anyway, so. 
<laughs> but it's, that's what it was. That they're, they're still praising God. They're still helping others. They're being like over there. My, now I forgot your name. Your Dutch people behind. Florence? Florence and her husband. Ron? Yeah, Bran, the driver. Fl Florence, the translator. And <laughs> Annette, you know, you call people out of the blue. I need to go there because I just can't try. Well, I can't drive, but I can't walk. So you got to call these people. You know, take me there and Ed. Oh, my goodness, Ed must be so tired of the hospital. He was taking me. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Uh, but they're there, you know, people are there. So yes. when I worked at the college, I didn't really realize it at the time that I was doing God's work. I had, um, you can't uh, witness when you work for the government, but I always had my Bible verses mm -hmm. and I was blessed. I could give the GED test one-on-one -on -one, and I had a lot of, I, they call themselves gangbangers. Gangbangers in wheelchairs, they got hurt, you know, you better stab your friend first before it stabs you. Yeah. It's, it's a way of life. And I always would say, do you mind if I pray for you? Mm. And in all those years I worked for South Suburban, nobody ever said no. So once you pray for and with somebody, they will kind of open up. Yeah. And it was such an experience. It was such an experience. And well, my daughter used to be jealous. She used to say, well, her family is at South Suburban College. And so God, even then, before I became filled with the Holy Spirit, he put me, he put me at South Suburban College to work with English as second language people and with GED students. Yeah. You know, can you see me teaching English? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I can, actually. I mean, he has some... <laughs> <laughs> really some humor, you know? And and mm. now, do you have any more questions? <laughs> well, let me let me check the time a second. Uh, I don't, because um, I don't have any more questions. Okay, then I can just talk about my now situation. You Yes, yeah. So when I got all my other problems, okay, I don't know if you know, but this arm, the hand is start doing, I can hold things, but I don't have fine motor skills. I'm losing the fine motor skills here. I'm, my shoulder is disappearing. The arm is not connected with bones anymore. So then I <laughs> woke up one morning, I couldn't walk anymore. And I went to the doctor and then they discovered the cancer and things. But God uses you for this, because now I have a bond with Debbie. You know, I, I always admired her. You know, I even worked for her. She would give me flowers. I worked for her at the thrift store. And, but now it's everybody at the hospital thinks she's my daughter. Mm -hmm. So then I can use this to explain that she is, and I don't want to preach, preach to people. Mm -hmm. But you let them know that she is a nice Christian lady from church, which her mother said, I can have to drive me around. <laughs> well, good know? thing her mother gave permission. Yeah, no, I did ask first. <laughs> she, yeah, it's... <laughs> you know, and, and um, well, um, Ariana mm. Miller took me one time to um, one of the cancer doctors, and Dory got upset because I wouldn't have Debbie taken me. <laughs> but, you know, we're laughing about it. But she, um, she is such a sweet, gentle person. And the way she took care of me, she put me in the wheelchair, she took me over to the doctor, and then she um, helped me there, took my coat off. And so then I told the doctor, um, I told Ariana, tell the doctor what you do for a living. So then the doctor said, oh, you got another job. And I, we looked at him, what, other, what do you mean other job? Hmm. And then the doctor said to me, didn't you hire her to take care of you? Uh -huh. I said, no, she's a sweet girl from church, <laughs> you know? And so we talked a little bit about that and the doctor turned to Ariana and said, don't ever forget that, but you are God sent. Whatever happens, you are God sent. So now I know why 
Debbie didn't go with me while Ariana went. You know, it's like yeah. you wonder. You know, you can see more and more of the puzzle in your life. Yeah. It's it, and I still get an, angry. I wake up in the morning, my legs hurt so bad, and I just, um, boy, I got oxycodone. I got this one. I got. It's like okay, not doing. I I like ibuprofen. Um, <laughs> But <laughs> I get up and I'm so angry and I scream sometimes at God. And I mean, I always, not literally fall on my knees because I would never get back up again. But I said, okay, you hurt me. I'm angry. I'm upset. Why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. And then read something in the Bible. It's, I tell you, it's just, um, it's not wonderful to have problems. But I would have never met different people standing beside me, you know. And I'm going back to Debbie because Tuesday she has to spend all day in the hospital again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and she had cancer, so this helps, you know. If somebody would be perfectly help, healthy taking care of me, I don't know. But also... You meet, you really do meet nice doctors, you meet nice nurses, and you can tell them, no, this is a friend, she's a Christian friend from church. And you see, um, well, I was in this little room and then next door there was a lady, she had problems with the heart and I had, I listened to all the stuff they're gonna do to her. I just had some biopsies taken out of here that didn't hurt, but just listening to this, then I'm thankful that I'm not opening my heart up, right. you know? So even though I have to see a heart specialist, because now they find out I have a bad heart, but also praying and deep breaths. Um, my blood pressure went from 232, Nancy, it was 100 and, 120 over 70, right? Yeah, 120. Yeah, when they took my blood pressure, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I didn't even know people could have 232. And that was slow. Mm -hmm. They told me, oh, she, she went down to 232. And I'm thinking. Jeez. So my heart is back in there where it does. Yes. And I do have good blood. I mean, I heal so easy. I mean, from now on, if I get cut, I'm called Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sue, did you, you said you had a few Bible verses to share. Yes. Right? And I'm not good in remembering, um, so I, I wrote down. But you open the Bible, and you know what? I do this a lot. I just open it anywhere, and there's always something good in there. there <laughs> there's is. always something good in there. It's amazing. And I, um, with Cottage Cove, I, at Coffee Break, we studied Revelations. And I'm really glad that I study that after I study many other books. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not a doomsday book. It's amazing story. The... Okay, I got to open it. Excuse me for a moment. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be 80 next year. <laughs> I'm just letting this know not too many 80 people, 80 year old people. You know, Looking up the Bible on their phone? You're yeah, right. And, and I mean, well, um, no, no, I even pay my bills on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, even, in Germany, my friends, my German friends, they don't even know when I talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bless the Lord, my soul. Okay. Anyway, Revelations. Um, when we started Revelations, it's, it's very interesting. But the wonderful part is Revelations is, like most of the books of the Bible, a book of hope, a book of comfort. Comfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, the great comforter. We have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they all work together. And it's sometimes I call on one or the other, all three of them, because they're God. And That's right. it's and there is, and most of you know this revelation, 21 verses 3 to 4. Mm. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And now my favorite little one. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And that's true. It will happen, I mean, and it will explain so many things. Yes. And then, um, faith, what is faith? Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And that's what we always have to remember. God just doesn't just have the Holy Spirit standing there and Jesus standing there going up and down from heaven. No, true belief is, it's in here. Okay, Paul, I did it again. And then this one is a little longer, but... Um, and it's very important to me when I'm down, when I'm upset, when I get angry, when I'm disappointed. I think about Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What can be more comfortable than this? Amen. You know? So I'm still very comfortable in God's comfort. Sue, it was really appropriate for you to bring that amazing story of God's work in your life to a close with those powerful passages of Scripture. I must say you are a natural. I was so scared. I wouldn't even want to think about it, you know. I... So, and here you are. And you know, you know what I told you before? Remember what I told you? I said, oh, oh. Just, just imagine we're sitting in your living room and yeah. you will be fine. Yeah, and, and everybody here who is here, I know, is sweet, you know. And... Yeah. So I would like to ask, would you be okay if we asked a, we asked a few people to come and pray over you? Is that all right? That would be wonderful. Okay. Yes. If yes. I could just, if a few of you could come up and pray over Sue. We got a number 18 here. Um, we can uh, conclude with the recording now, if that's all right, Tyler and uh, Matthew. Thank you.